Hello, everyone. Now we will talk a little bit about the technical details behind our sensor fusion road detection project. First, I will talk about vision-based detection. The dataset we are using is KT Road dataset. It consists of around 300 road scenes and their corresponding ground truth labels. So in ground truth labels, uh, the road regions are marked as purple while the everything else is marked as red. We tried two algorithms. The first one, or the easier one, is key nearest neighbor. As we already learned KN in the class, uh, I won't go into details. The basic idea is that we are trying to derive a boundary between two classes. In this case, in this picture, it would be red dots and the blue dots. As we increase the value of n, the boundary will be smoother. So intuitively, the road pixels have a consistent greenish color. So uh, we are trying to classify uh, pixels with similar, similar gray color to a road and the pixels with all other colors to non-road. Here is an example of the KN results. As you can see, we have very large artifacts. Uh, the, we are missing a lot of road regions, and the overall boundary is not very smooth. The next algorithm we tried is called fully convolutional networks. As we all know, deep CNN has been successful in a lot of vision tasks. And in this case, uh, FCN is very useful in semantic segmentation. As you can see, it can it can mark the a, a picture with the it can segment the different objects in a pic, in a picture. So it can uh, it can set the boundary for a cat, a dog, and their backgrounds. Basically, FCN consists of three parts. The first part is a pre or is a pre-trained CNN model, or it is called encoder. Then the, it is followed by one times one convolutional layers, and finally it is followed by multiple layers of transpose convolution or decoder, uh, which I will dive into details in the following slides. So the first part is called a uh, encoder. So basically, it is just the all the convolutional, all the uh, pre-trained VGG without the dense layers. So it can, as we can see, it can it can transform the cat image into a heat map of the of the prediction of this object. Uh, so it basically stored the information in a very dense vector. And next, the, the decoder is consists of transpose convolutional layers. So the transpose convolutional layers is exactly the same as convolutional layers, except it uh, reverses the inputs and the outputs. So as we can see in this animation, it is it it maps a smaller a smaller feature map to a larger feature map. It is it is used in the final part of the FCM. And in order to achieve the best result, we combined the feature maps of the in the multiple layers. We, uh, we combine the coarse higher layer information with the fine lower layer information. So the high so the coarse layer information can provide us with a with a smooth boundary while the fine lower layer information can pro provide us with the details. And here is an example of the results of FCN. As you can see, it is much better than KNN. Uh, but it still have some small artifacts. For this part, I'm going to give a brief introduction about LiDAR-based detection in our project. The word LiDAR stands for the, the word LiDAR stands for the light detection and ranging. 
it uses a similar principle as a radar, except that it uses laser instead of radio waves to measure the range to the Earth. The LiDAR is widely used in road environment recognition, since it can measure the position and the intensity of the object. Hence, with this data, the road border can be recognized easily. The LiDAR data format depends on the form of representation of the elevation data. In the KD dataset, the road form of our LiDAR is a series of points that stored at the x, y, z, and intensity values, where the x, y can be the longitude and the latitude, the z is the elevation in meters, and here is a visualized point cloud of the, of the LiDAR data. The scanner takes a deep measurement continuously while rotating around its vertical axis. So this means when computing the point cloud, we have to untwist the point cloud linearly with respect to the scanner location at the beginning, at the end of the 300 degree, uh, 330 degree sweep. So we wrote a function to filter out the unrelated area from the raw data. And then uh, the remaining area is the region of the interest. So here, so this is the front view from the car. And then we will process this data for uh, raw detection. Also, we wrote a function to like for the LiDAR and the RGB image fusion. Uh, this, is a, this is an example image. So as you can see, we fuse the data, uh, we fuse the point cloud and the RGB image together. The color of the point clouds uh, is uh, respected to the distance from the sensor to the particle. However, the LiDAR dataset actually contains more information than that. If we change our uh, perspective, for example, assigning the color with respect to Z instead of the distance, we will have an image like that. Now we can see an uh, image like a heat map. Like from this, from this image, we can easily tell where is the edge of the road and um, where is the car, like the obstacles, and where is the road. So with those images, we, we assume that the road is a smooth surface and where the two neighbor regions have the small variation in height. Relying on this assumption, the road segments and the road edge area are identified using a measure of similarity between the height. So with the image, uh, with with a process image like that, we can easily uh, we can easily implement like uh, any algorithm to like give the road uh, edge detection from 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 the lidar data. In our case, we're gonna use a filtering method like we did in the MP1. We will do the, uh, we will use a filter to tell where is the edge of the road and, 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 and then like uh, give the predictions. Since our alternative data set is not large enough to train a high performance neural network from the, from, from the LiDAR data itself. So once we have the results from the camera and LiDAR detection, we can fuse them together. The reason we want to do this is because the camera detection works better in well-lit areas and it can fail if the lane markings aren't able to be seen. On the other hand, the LiDAR works in any light conditions. So we can use a combination of both of them to keep an accurate detection even when the camera might fail in certain conditions. Here's a basic diagram, and as you can see, we can tune how we combine the two outputs to give us the best result.